Alright diesel fans, let's get right to it. Uh, I thought I should take the opportunity to go ahead and show the reassembly since <laughs> in the future I'm probably going to have my own questions and this is my memory. I'm hoping it helps other people, so here we go. This is uh, the IP pump off of a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta TDI ALH engine, uh, 1.9 liter. The pump, this pump is a 11 millimeters off an automatic. The, um, the manuals have a 10 millimeter and essentially the difference between the two pumps is the head unit, the pump head unit. The pump head unit produces the high pressure and the high pressure is what drives the injectors. So I believe on the, um, on the 10 millimeter, the uh, manual, these are, these are both um, the disassembled one and the assembled one are both 11 millimeter pumps. I believe the, um, the 10 millimeter has just a smaller pump body, or maybe the channels inside may be smaller, so I, I may be corrected on that. But here we go. So this is the fully assembled pump. Um, I have two of them. <laughs> uh, we can count. But to disassemble, you essentially take off the screws on the rear. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. You take off the screws on the rear. Uh, you let the head unit come out and then then we have all the plethora of things that you see here so uh, this is the head unit with the screw this is the head unit with the screws removed um, these are the actual injector ports and they call it injector ports because they do serve a function they are not uh, one-way check valves as you might think they are um, restrictive valves though they do create a point of pressure through the center and I don't know if you can see but let me see if I can get some light through. Yeah. there is um, if you look through these you should see a pinhole of light if you do not then your injector port is dirty and you need to disassemble it uh, disassembly is fairly straightforward um, you, you get a, a flathead screwdriver underneath this lip you pop it up there's a snap ring on it See, but there's a snap ring on it and then there's a very small nozzle that fits against that lip and then a spring not not a real beefy spring but a spring and that spring applies pressure to that nozzle and then that's it there's nothing else inside there's nothing else inside <laughs> on the other side you so clean goes pretty good when you're doing your, um, your disassembly or reassembly um, then on the top you have your plunger of course your plunger has the metal slash rubber, the rubber actually goes down into the socket and of course there's no light to them. but it goes down into the socket um, there's a small spring and then there's the, uh, this is your shutoff valve now when this is energized it actually pulls this metal it actually pulls this metal up into the, um, the coil uh, the magnetic coil that's produced from the 12 volts of energy that goes on top of it and it releases the plunger from down in this space. And I'm going to turn on a light. It's going to be fairly bright. There may be some adjustments that have to be made. But you can see down in there. And there's also, um, usually when you remove that, there's a rubber seal there on the end of the shutout valve that gets stuck down in that hole and you have to retrieve it. That's not a big deal. So then we move over to um, the rest of the pump. And th these. Uh, the springs and the plunger, the main high pressure plunger, um, this is what sets your timing. That main high pressure plunger actually goes into, I don't know if you can see, but it goes into this hole. Um, that's the socket plunger on the head. Unit. And um, that head then after it rotates, produces pressure to each of the four. And if you have six, then it'll be six. If you have three, then it'll be three produces pressure to each of the three sockets on the on the rear of the head. Alright, so then we move over and there's the all important I, I'm gonna turn this light off and just kind of right here. And there's the all important shim that goes between goes between the spring uh, on the plunger um, the plunger body uh, that shim protects it from the rotating um, reciprocating, I guess, uh, plunger here. And this reciprocating plunger has a key on it. That key actually corresponds to 
A, it actually corresponds to a key right here. Okay, so that goes into there. This goes in between the two, right? Okay, and and this is your um, quantity. This is a quantity adjuster sleeve. It should move extremely freely. And then underneath it, there is a hole. But there's also a hole uh, 180 degrees on the other side as well. Okay, so then we come to the rollers. The rollers uh, have a, a, a pin that goes down into the subquantity uh, assembly here. This subquantity assembly is what's actually down up in this area here. Okay, um, there's a spring, there's a seal, there's the housing, then of course there's, there's the two screws here. Uh, this one, I just wanted to, I didn't, haven't cleaned the, the housing yet. I wanted to show you how much gunk is down here. I'm going to turn on the light first and take a quick look. Holy moly, look at that. That is disgusting. But that's what was inside of this pump completely um, after letting it sit for almost two years. And that that stuff is everywhere. I mean, it's 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 inside of these injectors, even if you don't think so. These are... Uh, they're not ejectors. <laughs> it's, well, I guess they're you know, inside of these um, these fittings here. They're inside of the uh, the roller assemblies, in between the roller assemblies. It's everywhere. So you have to really clean this thing out. But, okay. Um, so then we move on from, we move back up from there. And now we're back at the roller assembly. The roller assembly has a small pin that locks it in place. And it has a clip that goes over that, and that goes down into the sub assembly, like I said before. Then we have our X, X our X gear. Um, you have to make sure that you put these things back in in proper alignment. In between the X gear, there is a spring. The spring actually goes down into a well inside of your main shaft here. Okay, and there's a washer here. There's a keyway. It actually goes this keyway, this very small little keyway. Let me put it down and I'll turn on the light and see if I can get close to it. Okay. This keyway actually goes into, uh, I'm sorry, the key goes into the keyway, not the front keyway. On these pumps, it has a front keyway, but it's not used. Um, it's actually used for alignment later, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So that key goes into the keyway. There is a 20 millimeter, there are two 20 millimeter, screw, 20 millimeter screws that go down into the um, the low pressure pump assembly um, cap, and this is the low pressure assembly cap. This is the low pressure assembly um, body, and this is the most important part of the pre-assembly. Um, it's usually the part that gets gummed up the worst, and these little veins, V A N E S. These little veins um, are supposed to move in and out freely. If they do not, then the uh, low pressure pump won't work. You won't get your pre-pressure to the pump to fill up the fill up the body, so that the high pressure part, which is this rear part, when the plunger goes in, it, there's there's no fuel in there, so the system's going to starve. Um, so you really have to make sure that these veins are polished. I mean, polished within an inch of their life, <laughs> um, and that this body is polished. The other side of this cap, you want to make sure it's polished. This guy here, you want to make sure it's polished, and you want to make sure that you polish um, the um, offset ring as well. The actual body of the pump, the actual body of the pump here, shouldn't have a lot of. Um, well, it was full of tar at the bottom, as you would imagine. And um, once you clean it up, it shouldn't have any rust in there. Um, there shouldn't be any. Um, scoring near the upper uh, areas. There is some scoring on this pump. It has scoring in four points, and those four points are really, I, I talked about them before, but those four points aren't that essential for the proper function of the pump. And I know well, mechanical people are probably screaming, but um, there is an acceptable amount of mechanical people that have, and the pump points still function properly. So, this is the inlet port down here. I don't know if you can see, but that's the inlet port right there. That wide slit. And this is the exit port. Now this exit port actually gets um, a supplemental fuel from uh, the timing adjuster 
plug. That's the one that has that funny head on it. It has two seals on it. You, when you do a re, when you rebuild your pump, you should replace those two seals. And take a look at that guy, and I'll tell you why. Because this one, um, they both look the same, and that one I've already made the adjustment on. But this one here, and this other one, it's uh, tighter than I thought it would be. This one here, uh, okay, I didn't put it all the way back in, just a couple threads in, but those seals really do a job. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but on the end there, there's a seal that's sticking out that should not be sticking out. The um, adjustments that are made inside of this, there's a spring and a plunger, and then there's a seal on the end. Um, the adjustments that are made in this are made in millimeters, so that small amount of seal sticking out makes a difference. So you want to take, you want to just take a vise, and you put this thing in a vise, and you push it together. You don't want to damage the seal on the outside. You push it together, and that seal on the outside, that little seal, will go down into the unit, and you'll be properly adjusted. But you also want to clean inside of that hole as well. Okay, and this is your inlet port where the fuel comes in. And I'm going to show you, show you where that corresponds again. This is where the fuel comes in, down in the unit. I don't know if you can see. There you go. Okay, so the fuel comes in there. Um, the fuel actually comes out of this hole here. See this hole at the top of the alignment ring? The fuel comes out into the body through that hole there. So you, you see this is the reservoir area where the compression, um, the final compression on the offset ring um, completes itself and the fuel gets forced out, the diesel gets forced out into the body right there. So now, um, so we have a seal on the inlet port that needs to be replaced as well, washer, um, compression washer that needs to be replaced. Now we have the sprocket attachment hub or whatever you want to call this thing. Uh, that is the most important part of the entire rebuild, and I'll tell you why. It's because that guy sets the timing for the entire pump. And the question I had for the wonderful YouTube community and for the TDI club guys was, where do you put that on this shaft? Where, where do you put that on that shaft? And it seems like a, a very mundane question, but if you put it on the wrong spot or if you put it 180 degrees out of whack, you will, you will, with 100% certainty, destroy your pump. A component in your pump will be destroyed. So a lot of people, if you do it 180 degrees, 180 degrees out of whack, you destroy this X gear in the middle. See how beefy that thing is? You know how much pressure comes through here to destroy that guy? You do not want to do that. <laughs> so let's get it right the first time. Um, those screws actually go on the end of this shaft, the, the washer and the, the large uh, 20, I think it's 24 millimeter. Um, nut goes on the end of the shaft to pull this guy into this conical shape to uh, stick it to the shaft. So here we go. I'm going to show you what I just found out and uh, knowledge is wonderful. It's wonderful <laughs> to, um, to give to others as a gift. Here we go. So as you, as you assemble the pump, the front end of the pump, and then you lock down these screws Okay. The next thing that you insert into the pump is this main shaft. Okay. Now this main shaft is supposed to go into the pump straight. Now this is the lock pin assembly. So when you're doing your timing on, on the car with the tightening belt, you lock this uh, uh, sprocket hub onto the shaft with a pin that goes through here. Now you can do it with a was it 1564? Uh, drill bit, put it in backwards, or you can use um, anything that's a approximately about, I think it's uh, 5.8 millimeters, somewhere around the 5.7 millimeters, anything around that area. So here we go. So, uh, but the shaft has a, has a keyway on it, and because of the gear on the end of the shaft, it actually sets the timing on the pump, so it has to be in a certain alignment as well. So here's the keyway. And there's that front keyway that I told you about it here. So as opposed to setting that so that the front keyway is in alignment with that front alignment hole, you have to offset the shaft or offset the keyway. And that's the only alignment you can really see on the shaft. You have to offset that by 
this tiny teeny little mark see this little, little, little mark here so you bring it down to roughly you bring the key weight down roughly to um, 10 o'clock and then the shaft will be in alignment once you put everything back together and you say that that still doesn't make any sense to me well you're aligning the shaft which is smooth to this timing <laughs> timing uh, governor this is what it does it, it tells what the timing is going to be on the entire pump so if you don't put this in alignment with the shaft then your timing's off on the pump you've just wasted your entire time okay um, to get this gear off the end of that hub I had to use this giant puller uh, it's no joke you set your pressure on it you kind of tap on the side of this hub this uh, sprocket hub and it flies off the end of that shaft so uh, unless you mark it prehand which I actually did on this one this one I marked before I did the disassembly uh, because I learned from this one I didn't um, unless you mark it beforehand you are in trouble because um, some of these newer remanufactured pump bodies the, the ones that look so pretty they don't have this mark and unless you know where that mark is and you can see I'm gonna hold real still get over as close as I can so that you can print this out if you have to but you can see where the alignment mark is and this is on the 10 millimeter and on the 11 millimeter pumps uh, the VE pumps I can't speak to them um, I think they don't have this uh, the alignment hub they actually have a, um, a sprocket connector that has alignment marks on it and that's why you typically don't see that as part of the assembly disassembly because uh, the alignment on those is either you know it or you don't know it and it's pretty much the same thing for this one either you know that mark is there or you don't know what's there to do your alignment properly um, some guys have done it where they actually set the shaft and it's 180 degrees out of whack and that, that does not work good inside the pump. Um, the pump has to inject fuel at a certain rotation and okay now that is not all of your timing of course once you reinstall the pump on the car you know you, you have your three adjustment and that's, that's these guys you have your three adjustment um, nuts that set the sprocket timing um, so you can either move it forward or backwards to adjust the timing and then of course you um, you can re retard or advance the uh, uh, increase retard or increase the amount of the quantity of fuel that's being adjusted by doing the hammer mod on the IP on the, uh, the top the IQ or IP whichever you call it um, it's an all electronic fuel control unit on top of the unit of fly by wire um, the VEs, of course, are cable control, um, and they don't have the same assembly as this. So uh, that's pretty much the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and put this together, but I wanted to make sure that those notes were out there, that people understood that uh, these